Hello, welcome along to Bangkok Chit Chat. A few days ago, we were having a chat with Kay Goslin, who is a Thai citizen, and she was in America, and she came back to Thailand and had to experience the 14-day quarantine, courtesy of the Thai government. We found it very interesting, got good feedback from it, so we thought we would revisit it and take out some topics from that uh, sort of chit chat interview that we had with her. We'll be looking at ticket prices in the future, also hotel selection and payment, food options, room life and also how she left the hotel and where did she go. First of all though we talked to her about paperwork for flying mainly the certificate of entry and also the fit to fly. Here's the clip. So what paperwork did you need? Did you need any fit to fly certificates or anything like that? Yes so um, I'm gonna tell you like once I got an email back from the mm. embassy I would have to contact the travel agent They will send me the name and the list of the travel agent where I can contact and buy the ticket from them. And also they will have the flight that is available and I can select the date and the time, but it's not a lot. And um, on my case, I got the email from them on 18, Ju 18 of June. So the oh. 19 of June, I was working to get my ticket. And once I get my ticket, then I can submit the ticket and I have to submit that's about it, the ticket to the embassy. So then can, so they can process the certificate of traveling back. Like this is to bring me like, oh, they allow me to come back to Thailand. You need to get this certificate. It's called COE. Certificate, certificate of in entry, certificate of entry. Yes, yes. Yeah. I could not remember the name. <laughs> yeah, so once and, and prior to 74 hours before you fly, you need to get the fit to fly. You don't need to get the COVID test, only fit to oh. fly. Wow. For Thai national, yep. So, very oh, interesting. Amazing oh. she didn't need any physical tests for the main two certificates that I thought were really essential for traveling. She didn't have a, she, well, she didn't have a COVID test either. Right, yes, that's correct. And she didn't have, she went online for the fit to fly and the uh, certificate of entry. Well, I mean, we've, we've looked at some, uh, from, the, from the Falang point of view, the foreigner coming back into Thailand, that's really what we're comparing here with, uh, with Thailand. But there's, there's, it is very complicated because you, know, you can return, uh, but there's a, a nightmare of timing, yeah? uh, especially with regards to 70, 72 hours for the, for the test. So Just getting on the flight. Well, and the booking of the flight. So mm. let, let's go through some things you should prepare uh, if you're um, if, if you're intending to come back, and don't forget retirement retirement visa holders and uh, tourist visas. You cannot come back just now. Mm -hmm. End of story. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're ed with ed they're trying to get teachers back in, that's fine. But this is non non OB mm -hmm. or non non -O, uh, o, yeah? yeah visas. You can come back. Yeah. yeah? Um, permanent residency yeah. was yeah. on the list. And then it? also medical. Accepting a permanent residency, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also medical. If you're if you're here, you, you basically come across. You you're taken to the medical facility. You stay there, and as soon as you finish your treatment, you're out. So, mm. uh, you know, in, in my opinion, I think this is all very sensible. Mm. So uh, and, and and yes, it's affecting all 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 business, everybody. Yeah, mm. um, but there has to be. I think find, everyone's finding their way in how they can contain this. Yeah? So you've got a couple I don't think of we ever can contain this. But so uh, you have a couple of examples yeah, of, so, of uh, so, non-ties. Right? Uh, yes, from the top <coughs> non-tie, uh, uh, there's a, a cover letter uh, you have to get uh, to explain your, the urgency for you to return back to, uh, back to the country. Which you write yourself? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you have... Uh, Take your marriage certificate if you're married. Uh, also, take a cop you have to get a copy of your passport prepared. Any birth certificates if you've got kids, and I take it your your own as well. Uh, you've got to have insurance. Uh, sure, you've got insurance uh, for medical treatment, and, and make sure it's covering co covering COVID, it's because some insurance obviously it may say, oh, uh, we don't don't cover you for yeah, COVID nineteen, yeah. and it has to be to at least a value. In a hundred for of a hundred thousand USD, and you have to have a statement in English, uh, and then you have to fill out a declaration form. Um, now, uh, also other things with regards to your your non-O visa, etc. If you uh, are 
applying or you have to show that you have a bank statement uh, of at least 400,000 baht if it's under your account. Now, if it is under your, your and your wife's account, it must show 800,000 baht. Yeah. Um, so it's not all that clear whether that's 800,000 baht because you've got a Falang wife uh, or whether it's a Thai wife. But anyway, the minimum is 400,000, which is, which is no different from any, any time before. Yeah. Um, the paperwork must be submitted uh, to the Thai embassy or consulate. Be warned, some consulates have different rules for different uh, different things. Just we're used to it. Yeah, mm. yeah mm. it goes to an immigration. When department. you mean submission, does that that's not online? It has to be physically delivered if it's paperwork. And <sighs> as 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 I understand it, yeah. this this particular guy, uh, Theo, whoever you are, it's just Theo from Netherlands. You had a great article, and this is basically I'll put the link to it uh, in the description. And he described that this is where I've got a lot of information and from other other places as well. Yeah, so uh, this guy Theo had to go to the Hague. Yeah, uh, he had to submit his passport, etc., as well. So a lot of running around. Very very well written article. Yeah, uh, and it was advised it could take two to three weeks to go through all the paperwork. Um, so. Uh, something else before you're leaving, because we're talking about that, that yeah, first yeah. step. Yeah. Uh, what we had was uh, you had to have proof of confirmation uh, that you had a hotel. And these hotels are called ASQs, Alternative State Quarantine. Uh, Thais uh, can use, uh, they get their, their hotels free. Uh, with us, for the foreigner, there are 26 allocated hotels, yeah? uh, but please, you have to book them well in advance. Uh, cost, we're seeing between th uh, 32,000 to 200,000. Well, yeah, I mean, Kay, we'll get into her hotel selection, yeah. how it was But you have to have on. this before yeah. you go, yeah? and you mm -hmm. have to have evidence of that. Yeah. You have to have a confirmed ticket. Yeah? with one of the flights which is approved for repatriation. Yeah? Um, you have to have the fit to fly certificate. You have to, which is, which is issued no longer than 72 hours before departure. And a COVID health certificate uh, issued no longer than 72 hours before departure. Okay, now it, hang on, is it easy to get those fit to fly certificates or do you have to hunt around for a doctor that is eligible to give one or it, it, how do you get a fit to fly? Do you just walk into your doctor's surgery and say I'm flying to Thailand, am I fit to fly? And uh, he you'll can probably sign go something? To a, I expect you'll have to go to an approved hospital to get that test. Yeah. 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 Um, as we, as we saw from Kay, she mm. just got it across email. Well, yeah. <laughs> the comparisons are like unbelievable at the moment. Mm. So. so these are the basic things uh, that are, 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 are covered. Yeah. But there's a lot of preparation. Uh, check the, the, the websites and what's ha on what mm. you need to do. There's, there's Facebook groups out there specifically regarding Thailand. Uh, but of course, the people who make the decision is your consulate, a Thai consulate or Thai embassy. So yeah. they're the best, best yeah. people. Yeah. Now, uh, we're saying two to three, two to three weeks in, in, in preparation. Yeah? The risk is that if you get rejected uh, within the 72 hours, the likelihood is you're not going to get a refund on your hotel. 72 okay. hours. So yeah, basically, they, they, they want to fill the hotel, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in all fairness, these people that are eligible to come back through this pretty, uh, I say complicated, but it seems to be a complete way of doing things safely, and I agree with it, is a minority. I mean, the majority of people are the ones that come on holiday, want to come here for a month or two and just chill out. Mm. <laughs> they can't come anyway. Mm. These are for people that have a real reason that really do need to get back whether yes. they see loved ones, a job, or whatever. That's whatever, correct. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, are you finished on this That's topic? It. Yes. Okay, so I think there's a, already the, there is a sort of a, I can see it forming the difference between if you're a Thai citizen or if you're a Falang. Ah, correctly which, you know, so, yeah. so, I mean, th that was the paperwork needed. We're going to be talking to Kay and highlighting something from the interview on our next video, which is all about ticket prices. Yes. So we'll compare and see how easy or how difficult it is. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.